All right, guys, so the internet is blowing up with all this iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max overheating talk. I started running a lot of these tests for my full review, but these results just can't wait. I want to do some testing to see if the iPhone is thermal throttling. Unfortunately, iOS doesn't offer a full suite of logs, data, and analytics for me to dive into like I would with a gaming laptop, even the MacBook, or even Android phones. So I had to come up with my own methods. I'm calling this the ice bucket challenge. So I, I ran some benchmarks on the iPhone 15 Pro Max itself. And I also ran it on several other devices like, like the iPad Pro M2 and the iPhone 14 Pro. And then next, I reran the iPhone 15 Pro Max benchmarks in a bowl of ice or in an ice bucket. My thoughts are, if there is any thermal throttling, the benchmarks in the ice bucket will perform better. Now I know this isn't perfect. Cooling the surface of a phone with ice doesn't necessarily mean that the actual components will be kept cool. But I wouldn't have to do such an outrageous test if Apple would allow us to see temperatures of the CPU, GPU, and even the battery. That would be nice. Okay, so let's go through my testing methodology really quickly. I ran the benchmarks at 100% battery, and then, you know, just running these benchmarks again and again, the battery drains, so it goes down to 50%. So I tested it again when it reached a 50% mark. I, I, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting wildly different scores as the battery decreases. Um, it doesn't seem like it did, but just to be sure, as I'm running benchmarks and the battery falls below 50%, I just charge it back up to 100% and then resume testing. Also, I close every single app I put on airplane mode just to make sure I wasn't getting any notifications. So let's start off with the Antutu benchmark. The 15 Pro Max, just on its own, in a room that's like 76 degrees Fahrenheit, got a total score of 1544139. And check this out, the iPhone 15 Pro Max in the ice bucket got 1637648. That's a difference of 93,509. That translates to about a 6% difference in performance. So that proves to me that the A17 Bionic Pro isn't meeting its full performance expectations in this iPhone 15 Pro Max chassis. So yes, the iPhone is thermal throttling. But wait, it gets worse. So Antutu has many subcategories of a score. Most of the differences are negligible, even when you compare it to the iPad Pro with the M2. But check out the CPU score. The Ice Bucket iPhone scored 12% higher. That's that's a gen over gen improvement. Typically, every year with new chips, you'll probably get like a 10 to 15% improvement. The fact that the CPU is able to perform 12% better is pretty substantial. Apple's phone heating up is preventing us from getting a 12% improvement on the CPU, at least according to this benchmark. But I'm not done yet. It actually gets even better or worse, depending on how you want to look at it. So this brings us to 3D Mark. I love 3D Mark. Coming from the PC gaming world, especially in the laptop gaming scene, it's the first benchmark suites that we run when we get new hardware. And Solar Bay is definitely the best benchmark to run right now for Apple's new GPU hardware. So I do want to point out that this is a more GPU intensive benchmark. And it's updated for Metal API ray tracing, which is something that Apple talked a lot about in their briefing. And check this out. I ran a 20 minute stress test on the iPhone 15 Pro Max in the regular normal environment, and then again in the ice bucket. So it's essentially running the same benchmark 20 times. They call it, it's a 20 time loop, let's just say. And when the final scores come out, it gives you the best loop and then the worst loop. In that 20 loop run, the worst loop was 3,680 on the iPhone 15 Pro. That was just in a regular environment, but the ice bucket iPhone 15 Pro Max was 4,708, guys. That's a difference of 1,028. That calculates to a 22 to 24% difference. So to put that into context, like I said, we typically get a 10 to 15% bump in performance every year. But here's something interesting as well. The iPhone, when not in the ice bucket, just like in a regular room, like in my hand or something, it lost 11% battery life. But the, when it was in the ice bucket, it lost nearly double that at 20% battery. So right away, I know that the score isn't a result of power limit throttling because the phone wasn't even charging on any of these tests. The only variable here was the ice bucket. 
So yeah, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is thermal throttling. This phone is not able to get the full power out of this A17 Bionic Pro. There's a lot more performance headroom to be had here. Now hold on though, don't get your pitchforks out just yet. I know a lot of you guys are asking Apple to fix this in software. You, you just can't. This is a limitation of hardware. So over time, Apple can probably make some tweaks and optimizations to the software. Maybe developers can update their apps to take advantage of the A17 Bionic Pro. Maybe these apps are leaning more towards the performance cores when they don't need to. Like these are things I don't know. I'm, I'm not able to see that with the limitations that iOS provides to us. But right now, the only way to fix this is to power limit throttle the A17 Bionic Pro, meaning that they'll just throw less power at the CPU and the GPU. So, so power has a direct correlation with heat in this case. Less power means less heat, AKA a less hot phone, but also less performance. Apple chose to make this chip perform the best it possibly can in this device at the expense of getting a bit warm to the touch. So now the question I can't answer today is how will this affect the long-term durability of the phone? Will the battery swell or worse start to explode? Again, I can't see actual temperatures of the chip and battery itself. I mean, I know a lot of other YouTubers love to measure the surface temperatures on the phone, but that's meaningless. We need to see the actual temperatures of the chipset itself and the battery before we can make any determinations on how the phone is handling the heat. And another thing to point out too is if you're feeling the heat on the surface of the phone on your hands, that means that the heat is being dissipated from inside the phone. And at the end of the day, that's that's more important. But another thing I did is I went back and I looked at the Wanderlust presentation that Apple did. And when they were talking about the performance, they weren't talking about the iPhone 15 Pro or the 15 Pro Max. They were talking about the performance improvement of the chip itself. So I think that leads me to believe that this chip will perform a lot better in other devices. And another point I mentioned that these are just benchmarks. These are meant to stress the system. They're meant to push it to the limits. It's not abnormal for any device. Even the $4,000 gaming laptops I cover thermal throttle in benchmarks. It's how it performs in normal everyday tasks. And for me, I haven't had any issues. I, I, I played a whole bunch of games and didn't have any perceivable loss in performance after long sessions. Yes, it got warm and I'm sure it started the thermal throttle and I got some drop frames, but I wasn't able to pick up on it. And there isn't any phone out there that wouldn't do that unless you're using something like the ROG Phone 7 or any other dedicated gaming phone. And that gets me thinking, if Apple was to release like an iPhone 15 Pro Ultra, or whatever they want to call it, that's maybe bigger and has a better cooling solution, maybe a vapor chamber, I think you're going to get a good amount better performance than what's offered right now. And then, so the next thing I did is I took it outside and I recorded a whole bunch of videos, some in just regular 4K, but then I'd lot in 4K ProRes RAW in log format. And it wasn't until six minutes in the hot Florida sun when the brightness on the screen started to dip. One thing to remember is the brightness generates a lot of heat too. So when the sun is beaming down on the phone and the A17 Bionic Pro is doing hard work for us, the display may have to dim to prevent overheating. But I mean, this was like six minutes into recording and I've used every single popular Android phone this year. And, and those don't even support ProRes RAW and all of those dim as well when I'm pushing it to the limits. And when I did my first look, I mentioned that the iPhone 15 Pro Max seems snappier than previous iPhones that I've used in the past. And after a few days of using it, that still holds true. So while it's probably throttling in everyday tasks and even intense tasks, it's still performing better than the iPhone 14 did last year. And it's still, it's, and I'm not, and I'm not seeing any type of visible throttling to where I feel like Apple needs to step in. I mean, yes, it's getting a little bit warm to the touch, but ultimately as of right now, I would just stop worrying about this. To be honest, this was all just blown out of proportion. All right, guys, give this video a like if you liked it. Um, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.